today I'm actually going to show you a technique. I'm going to show you a technique. And I decided this was like the perfect day to do this because um, it's really quick. It's really easy. And y'all, it's an awesome technique. It's awesome. And one of the things I love about this technique is it's going to appeal to every kind of maker. Okay. Every kind of maker. So what am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about uh, paper crafters. Any paper crafters out there? Let me know if you're a paper crafter. Post in the comments, okay? So if you're a paper crafter, you're going to love this technique. You might be a card maker, um, a scrapbooker. You may just, just, you know, be a paper addict and like to make all the things, right? Um, it's also going to, oh, thank you. I just pulled, I, I had it pulled up yesterday and, um, and I just pulled it back up today. It's just, it's easy. It's just easier that way. <laughs> Some mornings, it's the easy way to go. Um, the other person that's going to appeal to is anybody that loves creating with napkins. Okay. Anybody that loves creating with napkins. I know a lot of you are here because you're dying to see the napkins that you're going to be getting um, next week. That'll be come, arriving to you. Okay. So if you're a lover of napkins, let me know uh, that you're out there watching napkin addict. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> Um, the other person that I think is really going to like this technique is going to be those of you that love fabric. If you love fabric, you can do the same technique. The cool thing about this, 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 what I'm going to demo for you today. The cool thing about this technique is honestly, it will work for just about anything. It will also work for pretty much any, what I'm going to say, smooth surface. Okay. Okay. So this is a technique I would definitely recommend if your surface isn't too rough, okay? Like if it's not real rough or grainy or has too much texture on it, this is a great one. So I'm actually just going to be using these tags, y'all, today to demo on. These are just like shipping tags. This is a craft tag. Um, they also come in white. This, you can see, I kind of pre-inked. I've got a, a few of these are pre-inked um, just just because, I don't know. I just decided to, to grab them and some of them already have some ink on them. Um, so this is what I thought I'd use as kind of my demo for you today. Okay. But as I'm demoing this for you, I want you to know the tags are just an easy surface. It's a great, if you're ever practicing new techniques, right? These shipping tags are great for this. You can pick them up at your office supply store. It's just a nice little surface to play on. And then here's the thing. Here's what's really cool about them is if you like the technique you just learned, well, then you can write on the back what the technique was, maybe little take little notes or something on the back. And then these can become reference tags for you. And then you can just get like a book ring. And just string, just ring them all up on a book ring, and then it kind of becomes your little technique reference, um, you know, tag thingy. <laughs> okay, so I think it would be great for that. So um, I'm going to be telling what you need. Some of you that have been, if you're in some of my private groups, you have may have seen this technique. But that's okay because it's always good that we have a refresher. I feel like sometimes we'll learn a new, we'll learn a technique and we'll do it a little bit, and then it just kind of drops kind of out of sight, out of mind. So maybe this will revive um, this, you know, process for you and trying something a little bit different. Okay, okay. I'm wetting my throat. Yeah, I see napkin addicts out there. I see paper crafters out there. I see some fabric lovers out there. Yes, that's perfect. So yeah, start yourself some little reference tags. And that way you don't forget, because I think sometimes when we go to craft, or maybe you're going to work on a wood surface, or you know, you need you want to make a new canvas, or maybe it's a paper crafting project, or um, I'm just trying to think of all the different surfaces, you know, that you could use for this, really just about anything. It could even be fabric to fabric. Um, what am I going to show you? So it's a great idea to have these little reference tags because sometimes when we get ready to do a project, we can get in a rut, right? We can get in a rut and we kind of feel like we're kind of doing the same things over and over. So having a reference little, you know, little tag bundle like this will be good to just be like, oh yeah, I forgot. I could do, I could, 
I could put, you know, my fabric on like this, right? So I think it'll be really good for you. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to do this demo. All right. Y'all okay with that? I'm going to do the demo and then I'm going to move right into our reveals. Okay. Yes. Good. <laughs> okay. It's so good to see y'all again. I'm so glad to be back home. You know, as I had a wonderful trip and I'll be going live later, uh, later, like another time, probably next week to kind of talk about my trip and, and oh my gosh, it was just amazing. I learned so much. Um, it was called, uh, here it is elevate mastermind. They made all these, these cute little sweaters for us. Um, these little pullovers and, um, it was amazing. A lot of different business owners, all women, owned businesses. We all have, even though our businesses might feature different things, some are creative, some are not. Um, they're across the board, lots of different things. We have some commonalities in um, uh, our business models. So it was just really, really great. So you'll learn more about that later. I'm going to go ahead and jump right into our technique. Okay. All right, let's go. Okay. So what I'm going to be sharing with you today, y'all, is a super hot technique. I like to call it a hot technique because we're going to be using an iron. I'm going to be showing you the iron on method. Three different ways, three different ways that you can use the iron on method. Um, and it's just amazing, y'all. It's You're going to enjoy it so much. So the first thing I want to show you is what I'm going to be using. I'm using my, this is y'all, if you need an iron in your craft room, okay, this is my favorite iron. Let me grab my little thingy over here. So for the iron on method, this is what I'm using. You can use any iron that you have, um, but this is my favorite for my craft room. Um, okay, thank you. This is my favorite for my craft room. It's an Aliso. And look how nice, how cute it is. They come in different colors, but look at the, the size of it. Like it's not those little mini craft ir irons, but it's not big like your big iron. It is perfect. It just is perfect for a craft room. Um, it also has this, this little silicone guard on it. So I can literally just sit it right on top of this. I don't have to have it upright. If it's upright, I'm going to burn myself reaching and, you know, all the things. So I can just sit it on here. I got mine at um, Amazon, Amazon Oliso. I don't have an Amazon store. I know. I just, I just have never done that y'all. I don't, I don't have an Amazon store. So y'all just go put in the word Aliso, O-L-I-S-O -O, iron. You can get a pink one or a blue one. I got yellow because my favorite color is yellow. Very, very, very fun um, and great for your craft room. So here's another tip I'm going to give you. I'm sharing little tips with y'all today. Okay. For this demo. When it comes to the iron that stays in my craft room. Okay. The iron that stays in my craft room, I never, ever, ever, ever put water in it. Never, ever, ever water. Okay. Most of the things you're using your, what we'll call the, the craft room iron for, you need it to be a hot, dry iron. Same for today with the demos I'm going to be showing you today. Okay. Same for today. Hot, dry iron. If you need, if you need something that you feel like you need some, some steam or some water for, just keep a little mister bottle of water. Like if you're a fabric person like me, you can just mist over your fabric and then put your iron to it. Don't put water in your iron. Okay. If it's staying in your craft room. Okay. All right. Yes. O L I S O. O L I S O. O L I S O. <laughs> They're awesome. They're awesome. Well worth every penny. Okay. All right. So the other thing you're going to need, obviously you need some kind of surface. You know, I'm just using tags today. Um, it's just an easy thing to demo on. So I'm not really making an actual project. I'm just demoing with you to share a technique. And I thought that would be fun to do in a crafting chat. The other thing you're going to want to make sure is that you're on a um, heat resistant surface. Now, my craft room at home, I repurposed a TV tray and turned it into a mini portable ironing table. It folds down. I can pop it up. It's great. I'm going to be making one for my new studio here in our new space. As soon as I get ready to do that, y'all, I'm going to do that live and show everybody how incredibly easy it is to repurpose that TV folding tray to have yourself a little mini portable ironing tray. Um, I've shown it in my fabric fan club. 
I want to, I would love to say everybody has made one, but almost everybody I think in there um, has made one or, or has plans to make one because it's just so convenient. I don't have to go to my laundry room anymore to, to use the ironing board. I don't have to, you know what I mean? It's just convenient. It's right there. It actually slides right underneath my table. So it's awesome. But anyway, I'm going to be sharing more about that in another session. Okay. And I'm going to do it live. So all of you can see how easy it is to make it. So right now, tonight, the, I mean, tonight, this morning, <laughs> sorry, this morning, I'm on a heat resistant craft mat. And I actually have um, another little mat kind of underneath this. Okay. That could be, you could be on a towel, right? Like you could be on something else, but I do like having a flat surface. Okay. Kind of a flatter surface. So just know I'm not doing this directly onto the table. I'm doing it on a heat resistant craft mat. Um, the other thing we're going to, I want you to have, uh, of course, is some scissors, right? If you have little detail scissors like this or big scissors like this, that's fine. You're going to want some parchment papers. Let me grab this real quick. Okay. Oops. Let me turn it around so you can see. I want you to have some parchment paper. Okay. Parchment paper uh, is great. Again, something that you should have in your craft room already for other kinds of things, right? This is something I always keep in my craft room. So you're going to want some parchment paper, not wax paper. Let me reiterate that, not wax paper. You'll get a completely different kind of technique <laughs> for that. So parchment paper. And then, sorry for the reach, y'all. Um, the other thing then that you can use would be something like saran wrap, okay? saran wrap. I'm going to be using my plastic sheets that I use a lot. Those of you in my napkin club will know I use the plastic sheets a lot in the napkin club. So napkins, I mean, uh, plastic sheets like this or saran wrap. Okay. A surface of some kind today, I'm just going to be using these tags and your iron. And the first one I'm going to show you y'all, it's going to be paper. All right, so we're gonna do paper, napkins, and fabric today. So I grabbed this cute Easter paper, right? We're getting excited about spring coming, all the fun things. So I'm gonna cut this little card right here because I just want all of my paper crafters out there to see that, um, let's see, let me look at cards I won't use. Okay. Sorry, y'all. I'm going to use this little piece right here because this is a double sided paper. So I thought it would be fun to show y'all how you can layer things up. Okay. Let's do this one. Let's just do this one here. And so say we want to make a tag, right? I'm going to go ahead and just kind of um, trim this down to the size that I want it to be. Oh, I could do it on this pretty pink side. Let's, uh, let's save that for a different one. Let's do it on this one. Okay. So for those of you, let's, and again, this is paper to paper. So, you know, if you wanted to just use your tape runner and stuff, you could. But imagine that this was a different type of surface. Imagine this was a, what's a good surface, y'all? Like a mini clipboard, right? Or a little wooden tag. Something that you want to put paper on, but you've had, uh, um, like you've had issues when you've tried to use Mod Podge before. How many of you have tried to decoupage paper, like scrapbook paper, onto a surface and been very unhappy with the result? Tell me in the comments. I get the, the tags at uh, office supply stores. You can get them online on Amazon too, but they usually have them in different sizes, different colors, craft, manila, white. Okay. So if you've had trouble decoupaging paper onto a surface, I want you to tell me in the comments because I get this question a lot from paper crafters. How do you keep your paper from bubbling up, right? From bubbling up when you want to decoupage it on something. And this is a re you're going to love this. If you have struggled using Mod Podge and, and most of the time y'all, if you're using Mod Podge and your paper is bubbling, a lot of times it's because you either don't have enough Mod Podge on the bottom coat, the base coat, or you didn't let it completely dry. 
okay? When paper gets wet, it curls. It's just gonna, it just does. I mean, if it gets in wet or has moisture on it in any kind, any way, it's gonna curl. It's gonna wanna curl and lift. So if that bottom coat of Mod Podge wasn't dry, um, and then you go to put the top coat of Mod Podge on to add something else on, well, guess what happens? It's gonna start bubbling, right? The other thing is, especially if it's a bigger surface, Mod Podge dries differently depending on how thin or thick it is. So some of your areas may already be, be a little bit dry before you even go to put the paper on, okay? So you're gonna love this. You're gonna love this. This is gonna solve all those problems for you. So I'm going to take this cute little carrot paper and then look at this cute little Hello Bunny. I'm gonna cut this down a little bit. Okay, we're gonna layer up paper today, paper on paper. Um, but again, your surface could be all kinds of things, right? Okay, your surface could be all kinds of things. Oh my gosh, I cut that horribly um, because I'm not putting it in a trimmer. All right, let's try to get it at least a, a little bit straighter. Okay. Or y'all don't laugh. Remember, this is just a demo. <laughs> It's just a demo. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, um, do y'all want to see saran wrap? I know, I think I'll show you saran wrap first just because everybody probably has saran wrap or something like that in their kitchen. Okay, so let's, let's grab some saran wrap. Remember, I'm on a heat resistant surface. I'm going to lay this piece of saran wrap kind of here. Now I don't need all of this. So let's, let's get rid of some of this, right? I don't need all this. When you tear saran wrap off, it's just easier to tear off a big section of it. Okay. So I'm going to put my saran wrap down on top of the surface that I want it to go on. Okay. Yes. Great for greeting cards. Um, this also, for those of you, let me put this out here to you, okay, because I want you to get the, the full picture of what you can do. Let's say you like your paper crafter, but you want to put a napkin, napkin art, napkin tissue on paper. You can do it like this. Let's say you're a fabric person and, and you want to, you know, you could be putting fabric on top of paper, right? Like if you want to piece, put a piece of fabric on the front of your card or on your scrapbook layout or whatever it is or your mini book, right? So I just want you to, to, to grasp that all of this is everything I'm showing you can be mixed together, okay? So I have my piece of um, saran wrap on here. I'm going to take my um, cute little carrots here and I'm going to lay this on top. I'm just going to kind of drag this down. I may actually cut off a little bit more of my wax paper here. So this way now it's kind of sandwiched, right? It's kind of sandwiched. And it's okay if you have a little bit of wax paper sticking out. It's not going to hurt a thing as long as you're on a surface that is a nonstick surface, heat resistant nonstick surface, which is the mat that I'm on. Now, I don't ever want to put my iron directly to the paper, directly to the napkin, directly to the fabric, okay? So this is where your parchment paper comes into play, okay? So I'm going to put my parchment paper next. So I have my surface, my saran wrap or plastic sheet, plastic wrap. I have my paper. I have my parchment paper. That is what we're going to call your sandwich. That's your sandwich. Now I'm just going to take my iron, my craft iron, my little Oliso craft iron here. And I'm going to go over this. This is so easy, y'all, because what's happening is the saran wrap is melting. It's melting. So now it's going to melt. That should be plenty. Got to make sure my iron's hot enough. Yeah, I had just plugged it in, so, or just turned it on. Okay, so let's take a look here. So now, look, okay, do you see? Like, it's on there. It's on there. <laughs> There's no bubbles. It's smooth. You might have a little bit of um, just the plastic wrap that you have to just come in and kind of clean up. Sometimes you can just pull it off. 
or cut it off, right? But look how perfect that is. So imagine this was like a clipboard, right? And you want to decoupage paper on it. You can use the iron-on method now, okay? So I use saran wrap, but like I said, you can use your plastic sheets too, which, which I'll show you that. But I just thought saran wrap is so easy because you probably already have some in your kitchen right now. OK, so let's do paper on paper, because usually that can also be a problem for anyone that's decoupaging paper. And most of the time, again, it's because you put the top coat of your Mod Podge on too soon. Um, the pa the base coat is. Sorry, y'all is uh, still, you know, wet or moist. I'm going to take off a little bit of this because I don't want this to get melted onto my base piece. You know, I forgot to show y'all what I do. All right, I'm going to show you what I do. I don't want you to think it's gross. My napkin club members know that it's not gross because I use my fingers on my tongue all the time. But look, if you'll do this <laughs> and then do a little bit of this just in a couple spots your your spit your good old dna sometimes will kind of grab the plastic so that it's not so slippery when you're trying to trim it to an exact shape do you understand why i'm trimming this one to to more of an exact shape because i don't want this excess um saran wrap to melt onto my carrots. Does that make sense, y'all? So just having that extra little bit of stick them. And now let me peel this off because I'm actually going to put the saran wrap exactly where I want it. And now I'm going to put the paper. Oops, it moved on me. Right here. Okay, so now we're going to do paper on top of paper. And again, this could be napkin on top of paper, fabric on top of paper. It could be anything like that. Okay, got it? No water in your iron. No water in your iron, okay? Your craft iron really needs to be a dry craft iron. And I have it on its highest setting. I can't remember if I said that or not. So highest, hottest setting. And look how cute there it is i mean it's on there it's melted this the saran wrap melts and that becomes your adhesive so again i know i'm demoing this on a paper tag but imagine it was something else something else that you normally would have wanted to decoupage the paper to okay i hope that makes sense <laughs> some yeah isn't that cute so now i've got this cute little again this could be you know a card run it could be all kinds of things right Hello. Oh, sorry. I let my camera focus. Hello, bunny is what that says. <laughs> right? Okay, so we're going to move on. We're going to move on. So that's for my paper crafters out there. All right. Let's move on. Uh, let's do... Let's do fabric. Let's do fabric next. Okay. All right, let's do fabric next. And I brought in a little piece of fabric. Okay. So I brought in a little piece of fabric. I'm kind of giving away a little bit, but let's say that we've got this beautiful piece of fabric that we want to add on to. We're going to, again, I'm just using these shipping tags as an example. This may or may not be a sneak peek of a fabric that you're going to get in my fabric fan club this month. <laughs> Can y'all see this? Okay. You want me to go down a little bit lower? Okay. So look at this adorable fabric, right? So somebody out there is thinking, oh my gosh, I want to put this fabric on something. Um, I might have to take off. Let's take off this top part. It's a little bit long for my tag here. Okay, so look how cute this will be on this tag, right? 
Y'all, I am a, I am a maker at heart. So I love to make things like I've loved to make all the things I do. I love to make things with paper. I love to make things with fabric. I love to make things with napkins. You know what I mean? Like you may want to do this technique with book pages, music paper, found items, right? Lace, right? Like all kinds of things, right? So that's why these techniques really appeal to me because I can cross them over into all the things that I love. Okay. So this time let's go back to our, uh, I'm just going to use up all this saran wrap. Again, I decided to use saran wrap just because I feel like a lot of you have it in your kitchen. If some of you are using plastic sheets, like I do a lot in my napkinizing, um, you can use those too. Okay. All right. So again, I'm going to just kind of put, actually, it really doesn't matter this time. Let's just use more so that way you can kind of see what, what happens. All right. Okay. I just don't want anybody to be afraid and think they have to cut it just the right way every single time. Okay. So you can see I've got my tag here. I did a little inking on this tag with my chalk inks. So again, you can layer things up if you want to. I'm going to lay this piece of a saran wrap right like this. I'm going to take my fabric and lay it down. Let's see. Uh, let's pull it up a little bit. Do I still have? Hang on, y'all. Okay, I'm just playing around with the placement. Okay, I'm feeling good. Do you see I'm capturing this beautiful little image right here? Okay, so what goes next? I've got my, oops, sorry, I'm a, I may have bumped that. Okay, I've got my tag, which is my surface. This could even be fabric to fabric, just so you know, okay? Um, it could be fabric to wood. It could be fabric to canvas. Um, I mean, anything, right? Anything, anything goes here. Um, I have my saran wrap or plastic wrap. I have my fabric. Now I'm going to put down my parchment paper. You never put your iron, you know, directly on whatever it is. I always like parchment paper. And I'm going to iron. Dry iron, hot, highest, hottest setting. So we're going to do this one and then we'll do a napkin one. And then I want you to really, then you can start thinking outside the box on how you can incorporate all of these things. And if you're not sure, like if you just want to take a peek, you can kind of look like, see, I didn't quite get that little spot right there. And here's the other thing, great thing about this, y'all. OK, the other great thing is, let's say you didn't maybe keep the heat on it quite long enough. Right. Like when you go to trim it. OK, so let's peel this off because. Do you see the wax paper here? But look, do you see how it's just going to peel right off of my non of, of my um, heat resistant craft mat, nonstick heat resistant craft mat? If for some reason now when I go in here to trim this off, to trim, you know, the excess off, I realized that something didn't stick all the way. Or maybe I, I just accidentally messed up or my um, my wax paper, I'm not my wax paper, sorry, my saran wrap, you know, I didn't get enough in a, in a corner or somewhere. Sorry, I'm trying to, sometimes I can't talk and do all the things at one time. So I'm just trimming this off from the back. It's just easier sometimes to see that way. OK, if something didn't stick well, I can just do it again. I can put the iron right back on it again. Look how adorable this is with the fabric. Look how cute. Isn't that cute? Right? It's so cute. So, um, I want you to, you fabric people, I want you to be thinking about different ways you could do the iron-on method with your fabric. Paper people, how can I use the iron-on method with paper and fabric? Now let's do a napkin, okay? Let's do a napkin. 
Okay, and I didn't bring any, uh, I'm gonna have to pull a napkin from the napkin bundle. I'm gonna be revealing here in just a second. I know y'all are ready to see it. Okay, let me find a good napkin to use for this. Go find one that's kind of, oh, this is a cute one. Okay. <laughs> All right, hang on, hang, hang tight with me just a minute. I'm going to cut off part of it. I'm going to use this little chick. <laughs> I'm going to use this precious little chick. Look how cute this is, right? This is might be, this is a preview, a little sneak peek to one of the napkins that you're going to be getting in um, the napkin club members are going to be getting, which I'm going to do that live reveal very shortly. I just thought I'd do the techniques first because this, like I said, it's, it's going to be awesome for any type of maker out there. Napkins, fabric, all the things. So I'm not, I may have cut it a little too, but again, this is my demo. So it's okay. So let's do it right here. Okay. Now, it's still important as napkin art lovers, those of, it, of us out there that are napkin addicts or those that are about to become napkin addicts <laughs> happily, right? Um, it is still important to separate the plaza of the napkin. I'm going to do my lick and stick. Okay. I'll answer questions here in just a second. And I'm going to press my fingers together and it's going to help me get the plies off. We need to still take the plies off of the napkin. Still need to take those plies off of, oops, darn, I just tore it just a little bit, but that's okay. I'll show you what, what I do when that happens. I'm just going to, the my, my plastic wrap is just going to take care of it. So this time I'm going to actually use the plastic wrap that I use a lot when I'm napkinizing. Okay. Because I just want y'all to see how this is going to work. Here's one advantage to using these plastic sheets. And for those of you that don't know, these plastic sheets are deli bakery sheets, right? They come out of a box like a Kleenex. They don't, it doesn't stick to each other. Do you see like saran wrap will, will cling to itself? This does not cling to itself. However, it still works for the iron on method. Okay. All right. So don't, I don't want you to feel like you have to go get these sheets, but if you do have them already in your craft stash, use them. If you have saran wrap or other type of plastic wrap in your kitchen, use that, use what you have. Okay. So now I'm going to take this right. And I just did this fussy cutting. So uh, let me just kind of cut this sheet again. We don't want more than we really have to have. A couple different ways we could have done this. I could have put the plastic sheet in between the layers of the napkin or, you know, just to hold it in place and then cut around it. Um, again, it's going to be okay, even if you don't get it all. But I'm going to just kind of, I just don't want a ton of extra of the plastic. Okay. So let's put our plastic wrap right down here. Now we have to have plastic wrap underneath this whole little bird here. You know what? I'm going to show you something different. I'm going to show you what happens. Watch this. Um, you know what? I'm not in my normal spot. If I was in my normal spot, y'all, like you could actually even take a pin and draw around this. Like if you were really, really concerned about what it would look like, but I'm going to just show you what it looks like if I don't cut a thing, because I think it is important for you to see what happens. All right. So I'm not going to cut a thing. I'm just going to lay my plastic wrap. This could be saran wrap. Okay. I want to make sure everybody knows that. So I'm going to leave it like this, just like this so that you can see. If you don't want to mess with the whole cutting and everything, well, let me show you what it's going to look like first. Oh, another thing, because your, nap your napkin wants to move. 
right? This will help your napkin stay in place so it doesn't try to move when you put the iron on top of it. Okay, girlies, here we go. Ready? Just the napkin tissue. Going to put my parchment paper back down again, always with the parchment paper. Parchment paper is the only thing that should ever touch your iron. I want to show you what it's going to look like. Oh, my napkin came down on top of itself. Hang on, let me fix this right quick. Oops. Sorry, guys. It just tucked right down underneath itself. All right, so let's do this part again. Do you see right here where that little fold is? So let's go up this way. Lightly peel this back. Now, I'm going to show this to you because this is why I think it's important, y'all. Hang on. Let me. Okay. I just want to make sure that you can see this. Obviously, the plastic wrap down here, it melts and you can trim it off. Can you see kind of right? Actually, let's do it over here. Can you see, do you see how in the light you can see kind of where the plastic wrap stops and starts? It melts up. Right here's a good example too, but I can't get the camera to zoom in on it. I know it's kind of hard to see, but you can see it. You can see where it stops and starts. So I really like the idea of coming in, you know, maybe tracing it out, right? Maybe putting a background or something behind it. So let's do, I'm going to do another one. And I'm going to show you kind of how you can, how you can deal with this. You ready for it? Okay, I need another, here, we'll just do it on the back side of this one. So if I don't want to see that stop and start, but I'm trying to, like, I don't want to, you know, I don't know. Sometimes I don't want to use the whole part of the napkin, right? Sometimes I want to just come in and kind of fussy cut parts of it. I may not want to see all of it. Somebody out there might just want the chick, right? Or just the bunny. If you're doing a whole napkin, then it's a no-brainer. There's nothing wrong. You just put the plastic sheet underneath the whole napkin. But if I don't want to do the whole napkin, or I'm collaging, right? If I don't want to do the whole napkin, and I just want to do a portion of the napkin. I could even pull him over way over here. This is what I would recommend that you do. Sorry, I'm grabbing another plastic sheet. I would recommend just covering the whole thing. I would recommend just covering the whole thing with the plastic, okay? The whole thing with the plastic. Does that make sense? Oh, we have an interesting... Yeah, that's a, that's a spammer. Let me block that user. Do y'all see anybody, any other spammers coming up? Okay. Okay, I got one of them blocked. <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. Okay. If you're doing, again, if you're doing a whole napkin, you would just do the whole napkin, right? But what if I don't want to do the whole napkin? What if I just want to do a portion of it? 
I'm going to use my parchment paper. I have the plastic sheet over the whole entire tag or surface. And I'm just going to do the whole thing. Because I don't like the stops and starts. And sometimes it's hard, especially if you're, you're fussy cutting, right? If you're fussy cutting around a napkin, um, it's hard to get it just right on that plastic sheet. Are you still going to be able to write on top of it? Yes, if you use my favorite pens, which are pit pens. Most pens will write, will write just right on top of it. And I'm going to make sure that it's really good and melted. This is probably plenty of time. Now, the difference is you're going to have to be really cautious. You're not just going to yank up the parchment paper. You're going to peel it back. You're going to peel it back. And now I have this kind of like a, this little almost kind of a, a, a coating or a texture that's on top of the surface. So I don't recommend this for every type of surface. You all know there's so many surfaces that we use in the napkin club. Um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this for like a fabric surface again, because we don't want to see, you know, you don't necessarily want to see the stops and starts. But the iron on method is awesome. So what I'll do is for my napkin club members and my fabric fan club members, in our club, we're going to go into a little bit more in-depth training. Okay, we're going to go into a little bit more in-depth training if you're a club member on this technique when we're just using pieces, when we want to collage, when we're doing things like that. So there are some great little tips I can show you, but I'm going to save that for my members because I like to go above and beyond for, for them. But I think today, this is enough to at least show you how awesome the iron-on method is, right? Paper, fabric, napkins, right? It's awesome. Here, let's show this one too. Paper, fabric, napkins. It is awesome, all right? So it's a really great technique. Man, it's going to solve a lot of problems for you out there that are struggling to especially decoupage paper. That is a struggle. Sometimes we don't want to decoupage fabric. When we decoupage fabric, it gives a, a certain feel to it. We lose the softness sometimes of the fabric. Um, and of course, with napkins, um, Sometimes we can get those, that wrinkle and that texture that we don't necessarily want with a napkin that we can have when we're doing the wet method, um, but you're not going to have that at all with the dry method, with the iron-on method, okay? So really, really fun. How many of you liked this? Did you like seeing the iron-on method for paper, fabric, and napkins? <laughs> I sure hope so. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was a good little, uh, you know, just a good little session. Again, if you keep an iron in your craft room, don't ever put water in it. If you feel like you need to, to add water to a surface for some reason, do use like a little spritzer bottle or something. Keep your craft iron dry, nice and dry. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Does anybody have any questions? I know my head is down a lot when I'm showing when I'm doing these demos. So if you have a question, please post it right here while I'm actually looking at the screen. <laughs> um, and you can also, if you're watching the replay later, post your questions because I will come back and look at the comments and I will come back and answer your questions. Okay. I hope you liked it. So sometimes our craft and chat sessions will be actually making a project. Some of our craft and set craft and chat sessions, um, I'll be doing demos like this just to show you that there are other ways of uh, having fun with our awesome uh, artsy stash, right? With our crafty stash. Okay. What size are these tags? Okay, that is a good question. And of course, I'm over on uh, the different side of my room, but I will post them. For, I will post that. I will measure those for you and post that here in the comments after we're done. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't think to measure them first. Um, but yeah, it is a nice size tag. But if you get them, like I usually, you can get them at the office supply store, 
craft. Let me show you what the craft looks like. Craft. I love the craft ones. These are white. They also make manila, but they'll have them in different sizes. But now what I love about this is now if you do these demos with me, you can write on the back. This is the iron on method uh, with paper, right? This is the iron on method with fabric. Like now you can have all these methods, um, all these different things. So grab some because every once in a while I am going to be demoing on these tags for you, different types of techniques. And then you can just grab a book ring. Um, you write your notes on the back, right? Well, that one has a napkin on the back, but you can still write your notes back there. <laughs> Put these on a book ring and then you can start your little kind of crafty reference tags. Okay. Yes, it'll be awesome. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I'm sure that Amazon has them as well. Um, Y'all just look up shipping tags. Sometimes they'll come with a string, um, sometimes not. I mean, it's just, you know, it's up to you what you want. Sorry, I'm cleaning up my space because we're about to do reveals. <laughs> yeah, it depends. Like I said, I wouldn't use it for a, a, a surface that has a lot of texture or is uneven. You can do the iron-on method on canvas, but you would want to put something behind your canvas, like underneath your canvas, so that... Um, it's level. You, it's really good to have a flat surface. Better, better results with a flat surface. Okay. I don't usually seal these. I mean, well, okay. No, I need to go back from that. It depends. It depends on what the, what the surface is. It depends how I'm using the surface. Obviously, if it's tags like this, paper crafting, no, I don't seal them. I don't. Uh, if it's a piece, let's say it's a something wood that's going to go on my front porch. Yeah, I'm going to seal it. <laughs> okay, so it depends on the surface. It depends on the use. It depends on where it's going. Okay. When using the napkins on fabric, do you have to seal them? No, not usually. It, But again, it depends on where, what the project you're making, where is it going to go? Does it need to be sealed? If it does, I would probably use a spray sealer. Okay. So it just, it depends on the use. Like what, what are you making? Where is it going? That kind of thing. Right. I hope that helps. <laughs> but for paper crafting, I don't usually seal them. I don't. And um, I know, I kind of think I know where this question is coming from because let's say I want to do pen work on this, right? Like if I wanted to outline these flowers or, you know, I don't know, outline, you know, the chick's little beak or something. Um, typically you, you need to seal a napkin before you do that because the napkin wants to absorb. But what I find happens with this technique is because the, the, it, the plastic wrap basically melts, all right? So your napkin is that small amount of tissue. It's really melting into the plastic. Does that make sense? It's kind of melting into the plastic. So I don't have as much of a problem with the napkin absorbing um, like you do sometimes. Okay. Okay. I want y'all to try it. Highest, hottest setting on your iron, no water. Okay. 